Yeah, I'm live and then I'll introduce. Okay. Okay. Hello, everybody. See, for a change, I'm only two minutes late. This is a miracle of science and technology. I'm a great fan, and uh, now late OP will still trend <laughs> because I'm still two minutes late. Uh, I hope everybody's doing fine. Everybody's okay in life. Everybody's fine. Um, okay, I'll tell you what's uh, how this works. If you've never seen one of these shows before, um, I have guests who are uh, way more important and famous and uh, more achievements than I am, and I talk to them, and then I take some questions from you guys. Um, again, uh, most of the questions that we take will be on super chat, but uh, I will not be able to take all the questions because people also have uh, other places to be. Uh, so don't get sad if I can't take a super chat questions, uh, but I will try and take as many as I can that are reasonable. Good morning to Mohit Mahale. Good morning to just random stuff. Good morning to Nikhil More who has said late OP. Just random stuff. I said early OP. So this is all a contradiction in itself. Uh, Wayne D'Souza, I am fine. I hope you are well as well. Dalso Holik Anu, hello to you also. And uh, Ashish Gupta says, "Bhai Vipul, bhai ko le aao fir se." Yar Vipul, mere ghar mein nahi rehta hai, bhai. Main aise usko utha ke nahi bolta hai. Vipul, aaja chal. <laughs> I, I, I would love to get Vipul and KV on every single thing, but it's not, uh, it's not really this thing. Uh, Jain Kaushik is saying Vinod. Chalo, Vinod, shuru ho gaya. Abhi B98 kya hai yaar? Ram Kunwar uh, Sharma is saying B98. That's a new version of Vinod. Or. CSK Ku Vissal Podu has started by Say This Mal. So that's already going to begin uh, soon enough. Uh, I'll just announce who's coming in the next uh, week. Uh, on Tuesday, we have uh, uh, best-selling authors Durjay Datta and Ravinder Singh. Um, and one more person, I'm trying to figure out who the third person will be. On Thursday, I have uh, Tanmay Bhatt, uh, Kani Circus Clown, and uh, Rohan Joshi. On Saturday, I'm still trying to figure out. I have a feeling it might be Vikram Chandra, who's the author of Sacred Games. On Sunday, we have, uh, uh, he's an author, and he's written a very nice book about the Indian Army. Uh, we have Lieutenant General uh, H.S. Parnag, who's going to be there on Sunday. So, lots of people coming up, lots of great lineups. Uh, again, give on Super Chat if you want, or Insta, Mojo, PayPal, there's a lot of stuff. I, I don't have uh, time to read it because our guests have limited time. Introducing them, they played for Chennai Super Kings, they played for Team India, they played for Tamil Nadu. They are great people, great friends. Please give a round of applause in your houses for uh, Subramaniam Badrinath and Lakshmi Padi Balaji. Hi, hi, hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Very good. Is this too much energy in the morning? We're like, yes, let's <laughs> just, just too much. <laughs> Bit too much for Sunday, maybe. <laughs> but good, but good, good. Do days actually matter right now during the lockdown? Every day seems like the same day, right? Yeah. Yeah, actually, it is like whenever whenever someone asks, comes and asks you, you know, how are you doing? You know, I'm like, I'm like, okay, I'm doing okay. That's it. Like, there's, there's nothing much to do. You can't say that earlier there used to be um, you know, where uh, a time when you know people asked you to do something, I could say that hey, I'm busy, I'm tied up with this, that not able to do that, man. No, <laughs> there's basically nothing to do, so you're not able to say that, even uh, you know, it's it's kind of kind of the truth. Yeah, you got wealth of time now. <laughs> yeah, so how you guys like who who are used to leading a ridiculously active lifestyle, and I mean, like from a physical POV and otherwise, how are you guys dealing with like a lockdown? Um, Tough being an outdoor guy, like I never like sitting at home. Uh, probably last time when I sat at home, it was, must be like my school holidays in very, very nursery times. So <laughs> I'm a pretty uh, outdoor person. There is, if there is a chance, I'll just come for one meal or a two meal in the daytime. Probably sometimes I get back home very late because that's yeah. the lives uh, uh, evolved during my young uh, childhood days. So suddenly, this is like 25 years, 30 years, suddenly something has put us all in one room and computer is my closest friend. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to internet connecting and mobile service connecting my friends. We call it in Tamil, phone uh, rambapodra. That means uh, somebody keeps talking and talking, not keeping the phone down. <laughs> <laughs> You've just described the podcast, by the way. It is just me going on and on, and guests are like, "Are we done?" I'm like, "No, two hours more, please." <laughs> Eventually. Yeah. Um, but uh, you guys have yeah, no go yeah, ahead. Actually, sorry. same thing. Adding to what Bala said, I think both of us we are actually very outdoor outdoor people. Actually, we play a lot of sport together. I play against Bala. We go and play tennis. So now we are now we are retired cricketers, but still, you know, 
outdoor is our life we go and play golf together we play tennis together or we you know we do things together but being inside indoors is like kind of always been suffocating for me but i want to see green grass i want to see soil i want to really you know feel all that but that is all missing from my life basically in spite of that badri we are retired recently <laughs> yes yes we are not even active cricketers we are not something to motivate us even active cricketers what not exactly. everything is possible we are try trying to come out of that retirement phase but luckily thanks to covid is putting <laughs> in a hibernation kind of situation but how competitive were both of you when you were playing tennis together uh, badri you can <laughs> see uh, the stats is everywhere Now, i'm not telling about 20 year old badri uh, recently before this covid got uh, affected uh, before this uh, this uh, entire thing maybe in march or february yeah was, we played some squash also i want to know because of the rain because outdoor uh, if uh, that is not possible tennis is not possible we yeah. tried in some squash squash is like a room sport like <laughs> yeah yeah you you miss a little bit you may hit the head and i have seen badri tripping over here and there <laughs> i said badri once i got badly injured with my back playing squash and i said like badri i'm done for next 6, six months <laughs> for ball then, so then badri realize, you know, when we are playing then we realize that we are not 20 year old anymore bala we are both of us are closing in on 40 so we better better respect our bodies what they have it has gone through and all that so we just we just kind of you know have fun about it and yeah we, with when we play sport we are very intense i think the competitive you know the professional sportsman in us which has always been there comes out even when you are playing a game of tennis or squash or ball whatever we don't want to lose we just you know kind of uh, don't want to give an inch away that is the kind of intensity and then but uh, after sometimes we don't even look each other in the eye when you are really playing that sport you know because we want to but after that once we are done everything we sit down okay go to the bar have a drink you know and then discuss about the day's proceedings ah you should that point you should have played like this this have played as if we are some roger federer and rafael nadal something we just discuss all these things just like that i think it's but it's fun i think that is what is all about i think for me any sport you play when you you play it intensely it's fun otherwise it's like you know going through the motions but like cricketers as a rule are obsessed with averages do you guys actually like keep us like i mean this is full no doubt if you actually do this i will be ridiculously impressed where you're keeping a score of every tennis match to see who's won the most games across the board like that would be just like you have mohandas menon on the side just going like you know bharat ji has won more deuces in the last 3 years of playing uh, this tennis perhaps you should ask mohandas man he might have a number for this this as well i don't know maybe maybe <laughs> yeah put a word to try <laughs> uh but no but yes yeah, i think uh, we'll we we it might be i think tennis bala is a little better tennis player than me because he's got a to be honest to be player. honest and and this this fellow is ridiculously tall man he's 62 he has like his, his hands are like so long and then he's he's got he's got yeah. the reach no tennis court is like he's he's taking and covering i have to just log and take every putting on the run i'm like running from left and right but this guy with his reach and his long strides is just taking two strides and putting it back it makes it look ridiculously easy and with his height his serve comes like and it bounces up so much on me and all that so it's uh, it's pretty hard beating this guy in all racket sports man because of his reach Badri, height at least in other games you should give fast bowlers a chance man <laughs> <laughs> imagine <laughs> indian wicket you be slogging whatever amount of length you have doesn't matter it just <laughs> goes as a uh, slow motion goods <laughs> goods carry i think what bowlers are going through you know the whole world cricket cricketing world i think bala is taking it out all on the you know the other sports that we really play against each other you know? i never prepared for a tennis game i never prepared my cricket game or anything like you no know, with a kind of ipad notes and everything today i'm going to play only back end and i'm going to allow the ball and play all these notes call as well as tennis have taught me how to use this notes and everything normally i'm a very instinctive person uh, with cricket but other games have taught me something okay technically i have to uh, be at a uh, level so you are actually making like notes about like how to improve your backhand and how to yeah. make sure that you are great at <laughs> <laughs> that's very funny sir because i never been a fan of like uh, following my own uh, improvement diary writing or anything i never done that in my entire cricketing journey even when in my studies i just last minute just read whatever subheading and go and write a an exam and <laughs> it doesn't matter to me so suddenly this other sport recreational sport made me feel like as if 
after retirement i have plenty of time to work on what else to do <laughs> prepare, <laughs> prepare for a golf game okay i need to work on my putting today let me breathe in and breathe out take time <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so happened so my my, my dad lives in uh, um, uh, this is my mom's favorite joke is that she's a golf widow because my dad lives in lucknow and mumbai oscillating between the two because he has two golf memberships in lucknow so he basically he goes there for 6 months then he comes out he's like oh yeah i have a family also and then he goes and play golf for the rest of the year so i show up in lucknow once a year and i go and play golf for about uh, i think 4 hours a day uh, for about 3 days and my dad each time i do it is just frustrated he's like yaar tu is saal mein ek baar aa raha hai and you think you're going to become a professional by just playing for 4 hours a day but the, I, i don't know if golf is the only sport that has the amount of things you have to look for or if that's the case with every sport where uh, no according to me sir of golf is one game where you're in you're in perennial search for perfection so in golf perfection doesn't exist a perfect right. round of golf doesn't exist but all golfers are always seeking that perfect round okay you start you play a couple of bad holes you play a couple of good holes uh, somehow something happens you play you know then you think you play terribly and you think that okay i'm going to never play golf again and then the next hole you play a brilliant shot and you think that oh you're the best golfer in the world so it is this highs and lows and the you know the emotions that you go through on a golf course is what keeps you coming back it's like you're always searching for the perfect game for the perfect round but that never exists but <laughs> we like fools just keep going there because the thing is you know you do never know what the day is going to be what the round is going to be what are you going to do and all that so i think that is what makes golf such an addictive thing because it's it's actually much in a, you know in a way related to gambling because it's whatever you do even if you are you you played the best golf sometimes mother nature will be against you you know like when you when you're when you're putting or something there might be a small thing uh, you know on the grass which according to craziest golf rules that you cannot adjust you have to play however the ball lies and there is yeah. a rule you might hit a good shot and the ball might end below a tree where you can't play a shot you might play a bad shot but that will hit the tree and go near the hole so there is so many things you know so it's like basically it's like kind of gambling where you are always searching for the perfect round that doesn't exist that keeps you you know getting back in the game i'll tell you badri it's a personality level up <laughs> your character <laughs> level up yes you can never be a winner in golf course because it gives you so much of uh, teaching life teaching because one exceptional shot you play you said like okay wow i got my rhythm back i got everything back i think suddenly one shot one shot will kill your day enter yeah. your mind and everything why did i do that i have seen badri <laughs> throwing the <laughs> putters here and there oh, just, really <laughs> yes yes please be careful somebody <laughs> throwing the putters <laughs> <laughs> no those are some things i am not proud of i have been warned a couple of times by my club as well you know for reacting you know all that that has all happened but i am a very like i said i am a fierce competitor and sometimes this game when you miss you know this this sort of a length you know hardly through through 3 feet 2 feet putt sometimes you just miss you feel like oh my god what is happening and it's kind of you know you just there's so many emotions going through you just want to break your putter you know your uh, 25000 rupee putter you just want to feel like you break you break it but then somehow you keep yourself grounded and keep moving on like bala yeah. said i think it's a, it's a great life lesson you, you know, know it you is know. about it is about leaving your past not thinking about your future just stay in that particular shot whether you played a bad shot or you played a good shot because when you play a good shot it brings you with the next shot it brings you down to the ground when you play a bad shot you play a good shot and immediately brings you up that's what golf is so it's about staying in the moment staying in the present not thinking about your future and forgetting your past that so badri i feel sorry for the caddies on <laughs> what to receive everything still they have to lie you played a very good shot <laughs> <laughs> they have to keep it. I know I played one shot. I have a boss day, but caddies end of the day they have to keep motivating you. They know inside, deep inside, what have I done? <laughs> I'm carrying somebody who is not even playing one shot properly. <laughs> By the way, I'm just imagining like as a, as a cricket fan. Okay, I'm imagining this this image of like, hey, this uh, Subramani Madhurinath, what a gentleman in cricket. and he's just smashing his putters against people's heads and you're like what is who is this person who's become john macaron row of golf yes. right now this is crazy yes man really crazy he says he that's exactly what it is uh, see what do you see me on the on the cricket cricket pitch 
I don't know how it was. I think being a professional in that sport, I think right, you know, yeah. that was that was something you know, that I had to ad- ad- adhere by and all that. I think you know something. I was never with my emotion. Always in control of my emotions because that was my job. But golf is like pleasure for me. It's like it's like you know. I just that's a place where I really go. I just vent out my emotions. Then I come back. See, you wouldn't believe that is one of the one sport. You know, that's the time when we play golf for four hours or four and a half hours. I never touch my mobile phone man for that four hours. I don't even have the drive to check my phone for a message or a you know for Twitter or Instagram, WhatsApp, whatever. That four and a half hours, I put my phone away. Sometimes I leave it in my car. I'm not even bothered about it. That's what it is all about for me. You know, it's not about anything else. That four and a half hours, I'm not bothered about what's happening in the rest of the world. I think that is where the therapy comes in. So once you come back, you feel like oh fuck, I'm I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I didn't I, I didn't use the word. But then when I come back, I feel like okay. um you know i i i've done something and i've you know i'm feeling really good that uh, you know i've uh, i've been away it's a great distraction i think it's one of the they, they call it that's why they call golf a good addiction you know it, it is a good addiction because it takes you away from whatever is there in your life good and bad and that for four and a half hours and i i and i'm really proud of myself that that four hours or five hours i don't touch my mobile phone i think that is something that i really like I'll tell you a fun story. So my dad plays golf very religiously for years and years. Okay, and my parents were both in the government. And uh, ages back, there was a tournament happening in Chandigarh. And my mom plays like golf here and there or whenever possible. And so my dad was competing in this whatever a civil services uh, cup or whatever in Chandigarh. And my mom was like, "I'll also come just as a compliment. I'll also come." <laughs> so my mom also competed in the civil services for women. and uh, there were about i think 270 men competing okay out of which my dad finished i think 30th or something which is pretty good uh, in the women section there were three women competing and my mom came second <laughs> so <laughs> so she got she got a trophy not only that her photograph came with the golf trophy in the papers the next day and my dad is like what is this man i've been i've been doing this for years and you already in the papers so yeah doesn't matter you end up getting like... prize doesn't matter you all you need to do is put your participation there <laughs> yeah this is what you call uh, a big fish in a small pond right <laughs> yeah 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 uh but okay so so what are you guys doing right now i mean now there's obviously no no golf there's no such thing so how are you guys keeping yourself sane because i think keeping yourself sane is the key during this uh, period right yeah for yeah. me actually i'm just i we just have a small gym in our building uh, luckily uh, there's a small gym which is only to for the you know the people in the people in the building so i'm pretty pretty blessed to have that so i just go and do little bit of workout slight light weights slight cardio something like that i just keep doing at least half an hour to 40 minutes every day i try and get my you know heart rate up i think uh, i think bala will agree with me we both are used to physical exercise yaar so throughout our life we been you know doing only physical exercise so i can't sleep in the night if i'm not tired if i'm not sweated out that day somehow i can't sleep so i just yeah. feel like i have to go and just sweat it out make myself tired get some pain even if there is no pain i have to get some back pain or <laughs> ankle pain in some way or the other so that i get good sleep so that is the kind of mindset i've gone to so i just keep doing something so that has kept me sane uh, for now uh, you know just this this lucky lucky that i have we have a small gym in our in our building i think uh, you can put in different phases of this uh, particular four months first one month it was panic and trying to do <laughs> lot of things which uh, okay be there don't speak to anybody just follow that social distancing and everything is very mandatory that time we didn't understand the uh, the i thought i generally thought it's going to go away in one month so probably yeah. nobody would uh, expected in that phase that it is going to be this much a uh, long stretch and uh, i thought like okay one month we will stick to this uh, discipline and uh, then slowly i thought like what can i do in that one month i have to keep myself occupied like badri said i'm a, i'm a big uh, i mean uh, enthusiast on fitness because i need to sweat i need to go draining so i discovered in my house if i open all the, the first floor the, the floor which i'm living and uh, we live in an independent house if i open all the doors i get around 35 meter stretch so okay let me do a shuttle run and let me do a beep run let me do all the test whatever uh, i need to you know find out in internet and record that and just like that get into that zone 45 days in a row i was looking forward that evening session and happily the whole day i'll try to find some sort of killing time and try to go to the supermarket and 
wear mask and be a little bit cautious and quickly get all these things into the bag and just run away from the supermarket for the survival then uh, i'm not a i mean the person who's going to involved in cooking and all but uh, yeah. i would rather get my son engaged i'll rather pick the choice because uh, <laughs> they try to make me a math teacher or a some because he's 4 year old 1 uh, plus 1 one in the mind one in the finger is equal to two <laughs> all these things only i can teach i don't know the example <laughs> once but uh, yes uh, it is uh, it is slowly improved the first phase to second phase now if you ask me i have uh, i have come into a survival zone where i know how to handle the day <laughs> I, i can actually organize many things in one day make a call do this zoom call boys trip planning <laughs> evening <laughs> blueprint for the future the boys always the pipeline for quite a while the boys trip that we have our friends group yeah that's the one which uh, the lot of time is that the so time is wealth so bored but still managing some ways or other to keep yourself occupied here what is this boys trip planning where are you guys planning to go eventually what like and, and how many times has it been delayed and, so far look badri is asking us to reveal in youtube <laughs> <laughs> There will be thousands of spies who's waiting to hear. A friend of mine was just telling me, "So, so we you know, like, regularly we have a we have a close friends group. Uh, me, Bala, and uh, you know three three other guys. So we are like five of us. We are really a close knit group. Uh, it's kind of uh, you know kind of for me that is also therapy. I mean, with these guys, including Bala, I don't need to think about what I'm saying. I can just talk whatever comes to my mind. I can straight away. they won't judge me for whatever i say so that is for me is really good and we go regularly you know like um, you know sometimes inside india sometimes sometimes outside india we regularly go once in two years we start off with bala's uh, bachelor wedding when bala got married um, in uh, you know i think it was 2000 uh, before 2016 i think that time we went for a first boys trip so we went that okay before bala gets married we have to we our friends have to go for the trip so we went on the trip and then we went once more outside it so twice we have gone outside india and once we have gone inside you know to the forest also we both love the forest being in nature sitting by the bonfire uh, with a drink and talking that is our thing we really like that so we we go regularly you know kind of uh, you know make time we have made arrangement with our wives that we will go at least once in two years we will go for a boys trip uh, only one the boys and then we will just you know just just go and relax and come uh, I I I want to leave the details at that. I don't want to go more into the details of. <laughs> oh, never, <laughs> never. <in. laughs> so, how many days is the is the boys trip? How long do you guys go? Just a one week in like a long. Max uh, a week. Yeah. 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 Max seven days. We don't want to be away from our wives. Uh, you know, uh, we want to be. Oh, nice. how nice! Yeah, what a nice. <laughs> you know, leave, uh, leave the this store. Is, like, this is Bara being political. <laughs> I think political everything has to be right for me. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the forest; it was great, but I really love my wife. No, no, seven days. I love my wife. Is this something I have to keep repeating? <laughs> but I, I, I went out uh, every time I've gone out with my friends for a trip. It's, it's. Uh, so the first day, it's like, hey, let's do as much exercise as possible, and the second day is just the 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 stupid amount of drinking is just. Like after a point, we are like, what are we doing? Like I remember, a friend of mine, we made chai for him in the morning with milk, and he's putting vodka inside the chai. It curdles, but he's like, yeah, vodka waste will happen, and he drank it. And then, dude, what is wrong with you? Don't have curdled chai in the morning with vodka. Um, so yeah, organic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fully organic paneer he's made basically. Uh, so how did you guys? How did the friendship start? It happened like I think you guys. Uh, uh, I think uh, Badri was telling me something during the under under something. One of the under fourteen, seventeen. Went to England. One of our mentor, like you know, uh, Bharat Reddy, former Indian cricketer. He took a team uh, because I was very new with uh, cricket ball cricket because I was totally new. That was during my twelfth standard. Uh, uh, in the break, my sister said. Uh, why don't you try cricket seriously? Because not that I'm not very bad. I'm average student, but I was very passionate. But uh, this tour came uh, opportunity. Those days, uh, I mean, you have to pay for the tour uh, if uh, somebody organizes this tour. So uh, hardly because it's a huge one going to England in 1999. So my sister was working in abroad, and uh, she helped me with that uh, now financial support. And that's when. we both uh, met at the airport uh, or at that uh, suit suit place 
okay. i think uh, you came you you went to that suit place because first time we have been like asked to go to the tailor shop to make a suit i have never seen a suit in my life <laughs> what to do to tie suit don't know how to wear a tie so these are all like you know i had to ask one of my friend pradeep who have to come before that day and teach me how to knot and everything then i think uh, in that suit shop only like the tailor shop only we met each yes, other first i met first uh, so not only that so mr bharat reddy like what uh, bala mentioned so he was organizing this trip to england where we are going there for a month so for for bala his sister uh, you know uh, sponsored for me i think uh, my company kemplus is playing for that team so they sponsored they sponsored the money because we we hardly had any any money in our bank in, in 99 so actually so they sponsored and i met bala first like you mentioned in that suit place and then after that suit place you know there were many things happened though so they taught us we were so raw that they had to mr varthredi took us you know to the conference room and he taught us you have to have the fork in your left hand knife in your right hand and then you have to wear a blazer when you are actually having that official lunch so every match when we played in england there was used to be a match you know that's be the long table where the uh, you know the uh, home team sits on this side and opposition sits on that side and uh, you know they serve us food and we sit and you know supposedly talk with each other and and, and have enjoy the lunch but but which obviously we couldn't do uh, you know being being the being the guys the 17 we were 17 Yeah, he, I think Bala was 17 yeah. and I was 18. Uh, I think something. And you know, Suad Bini was there, Aditya Srikanth, yeah. Dinesh Karthik was there. Dinesh Karthik was uh, like you know, 13. You guys were there, so yeah. that was the that was the first time we, you know, that was the first time for them many things. First time we ever wore a suit. First time we ever wore a tie. First time we were actually going on a flight. First time we were ever going out of the country. <laughs> so it was uh, uh, many firsts. And, and i remember first time you know another experience was first time we ever saw a coke vending machine there was this vending machine was right there and me and bala were wondering what to do with this how to get this coke coke <laughs> oh we carried only 100 pounds yes. because there is no money <laughs> 100 pounds we have a big list of things to you know buy <laughs> as well as i have to you know buy a shoe for my coach my trainer around 5 6 pairs of shoes i have in my mind to buy So I have to go to a one pound shop to create that list. Okay, so one pound shop for my house, my sisters, my mother, whatever. That fancy kind of a bathroom wear and everything. Like, yeah. what is this? This looks like so a so rabbit. So <laughs> this hundred pound figure was not something that we arrived at by choice. We took, we emptied our whole bank account, and then that's what we ended up with about hundred pounds, around hundred pounds. So that time, what happened was England was very famous for shoes. In 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 the late nineties, uh, um, you know, there wasn't this quality shoes like Nike, Adidas, Puma. They all ne- never entered the Indian market. So it was only kind of you know the English make shoes like Donny, Pony, and all these Eng- English companies, Coco Bura. All these yeah. English companies, those sh- cricket shoes were really valuable. So we had to when we we thought, okay, we are going to England. We are going to buy two, three shoes, one joggers, one pull spikes, half spikes, where we are going to use for the entire year. and apart from that our friends used to give us hey please yaar get me one shoe our friends you know our coaches they will request because when you're going to foreign they all they need is shoes shoes was really valuable so buy shoes buy shoes so we had 100 pounds so we and bala were looking wherever we go hey where is the sale hey sale like now where is the sale where is the sale where was we look for the the lowest grade you know there's in amazon and all you look for 30% 40% it is i to go low to buy there is a category sort of category you yeah. reach back and your coach is like why have you got me chappals <laughs> like this is the cheapest this is the cheapest shoes we could find were chappals but um, how is the very expensive to be honest uh, yeah. the 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 kind of conversion 80 rupees i think per uh, pound and it is yeah. as like you wiped out the, the savings of one year of your salary stipend whatever you were getting and uh, imagining spending a penny is <laughs> matters like every penny like badri said like okay let's have a coke let's wait for the saturday and evening and we will put <laughs> and get yeah. drink actually uh, after a while uh, you know mr bharat reddy who took us he saw that we both were little clueless and helpless in this country he realized it these two boys i don't know whether they are actually doing it then he after it he realized that he used to give us 5 pounds he used to give us 5 pounds uh, go uh, guys uh, go out and have a burger you guys because they he knew that we kind of kind of didn't, didn't have the thing to go and actually buy a burger for 5 pounds and actually have it burger no chance we don't know what is burger here what is burger we <laughs> never <laughs> seen a burger <laughs> no idea what is this patty what is inside it what is the meat what is what is inside it <laughs> i think we were literally uh, 
I mean, you go into a wildlife, you're left alone, <laughs> all alone, <laughs> wilderness, <laughs> thrown into the wilderness. So, only thing uh, which is like uh, very good was like when we uh, was about to land, like London, the Heathrow Airport. Suddenly, we see a wonderland. The cloud covers and comes down. Oh, yeah. the house is all same. All the brick houses yeah. and everything. All looks like what, man. This is something which we have never seen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I remember. I think. I think. I don't know which one of you had put up a photograph of you guys when you were about sixteen or something. Everybody has oversized uh, suits because they usually make the suits so that they'll fit you in the next two years or whatever it is. Yes. And I remember Dinesh Karthik, who's it's like coming till here. <laughs> Everybody's loose, and it's just hilarious watching those photos. Somehow, somehow, very bad in the industry has come a long way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The BCCA suits were always big and long. I don't know why they were always like almost up to the knee and almost up to the <laughs> up to the thing. They were like ready-made sizes. I think they will just give <laughs> that uh, you know that shirt and the blazer, which you can only wear once for that flight that you are taking, and then you are coming back. That's it. You can never use that blazer or the shirt huh. again. There is no custom made. There is one thing. It's not custom made. You pick the sizes: large, double XL, XL. <laughs> <laughs> For, for suits, which is a weird way. Okay, I just want to take a few comments, which people are very excited to have you guys here. So a lot of comments have started on the live. Uh, uh, Abhi Darshan, Reddy, thanks a lot. Neeraj Krishnan, my best friend, thanks a lot. Uh, okay, Yash Mahajan and Vasu Sharma have uh, have uh, uh, stumbled upon one thing which made drive a wedge in your friendship, which is my intention of having you guys together. Is that uh, one of you uh, has hit sixes of Shoaib Akhtar? <laughs> just this is like a legendary your legendary status has gone even higher because of those sixes so what is that experience like like what what, what is the uh, do you want to take us through what yeah, happened everyone not only me <laughs> <laughs> i shocked the entire cricketing fraternity <laughs> i think i i still don't know how, how it happened and uh, we call my son now watches this iron man comes and spider man comes and uh, hulk comes i don't know what gave it to me that particular <laughs> suddenly like i still remember 2003 uh, there was a irani trophy match full indian team uh, rest of india was packed with stars and sachin was leading the bombay team and i was sent as that was my first big exposure in uh, batting against the best to so, ajit agak abhishek salvi and all sairaj bhosle and dominating a uh, Uh, so we also had Saurav was uh, leading the uh, rest of India side, full team: Rahul Dravid, Virendra, uh, Virendra Shivak, Lakshman, Anil, Anil Bai, and uh, full team. Zayir. So I was asked to go for a. I mean, asked. Uh, uh, John Wright suddenly came and said, "Like you're going in for a night watchman, fourth inning." So I just went defender, 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 two overs. I just, I we got a partnership, Rahul and me. I had a partnership of hundred plus or ninety or something. I played till lunch, the fourth, yeah. fifth day morning, and I was like literally someone who just make the ball sit in that particular wicket and crease area. And suddenly, within a six months span, I was hitting the ball and it is flying over the stand. <laughs> I might have got shocked. What? What's happening with me? Yeah, I couldn't believe this. And uh, yes, I thought like this tennis ball instinct suddenly comes. Because I played a lot of gully cricket in my streets and everything, I used to be a recognized batsman. Not that one properly, like you know, technically sound or anything. But John Wright, John Wright mentioned. I broke that bat also. John Wright mentioned in that bat, saying like, "Wow, we got a next black Bradman." <laughs> 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 and I got some amazing comments in that uh, bat, which uh, lasted only one series. I wish it had lasted a little bit more time because. <laughs> I think it's the power of the bat, not me. Okay. No, but uh, I'm just curious about Shoaib Bakhtar's response because Shoaib Bakhtar is not like on the field; he's never the calmest human being. Like him, like he is to get devastatingly angry with like. I, I, I've mentioned this incident many times because first time yeah. I'm facing Shoaib Bakhtar in uh, yeah. one of the match, Peshawar match, Peshawar second, second ODI in Peshawar. Yeah. The wicket was a little damp, and we lost a lot of wicket. Uh, UV was batting one end, so. Uh, I just went in and asked uh, Yubi, "What's up?" Like <laughs> he said nothing. <laughs> you don't know. I was like, "Okay." Then uh, I just able to leave the ball just like that. So it, I mean, nothing. Uh, I didn't have too much of like no thinking about this guy is bowling 150 kilometer hour or something. I just reacted to the ball and just played. 
and suddenly he thought like you know why this guy is leaving the ball very casually so i'll come around the wicket and target body so behind the wicket keeper was mohin khan mohin khan said like come on let's hit some blows i mean uh, let uh, target let's target his body then i said like normally when you someone bowls around the wicket a batsman's perspective you have to change the side spin because to get a you no know, correct uh, uh, i mean a uh, background because otherwise normally side screen is kept for that bowler arm and you get to see the ball properly so i am not used to that i am not used to changing the side screen so i was again leaving the ball like that but mohin khan started leaving <laughs> letting the ball go <laughs> he couldn't see he couldn't see couple of byes went for four he started going balaji <laughs> please <yaar." laughs> change the side screen but only with the batsman's uh, uh, i mean a request only the umpire will change the side screen that right. is why it's not mandatory so that was a funny incident i still remember but yes it was fun i mean playing shoy bakta yeah 150 km per hour good fun uh, is yeah. okay for bala <laughs> <laughs> i think as long as you do, you're not aware of too many things like uh, how much uh, speed he is bowling and worried about uh, speed and what he had uh, create reputation and everything i think things will be much easier nowadays we see a lot of things in google and search and search and find out we will become our own doctors <laughs> that's when the complication starts coming in <laughs> so i was very much not touched anything yes roy bakta one i mean some other bowler that's it so uh, uh, badri i don't know if you saw the episode with joy bhattacharya but uh, joy basically we, we were just discussing like people, like players who uh, not necessarily didn't get their due but were severely underrated in see in uh, in uh, the ipl and your name was the first name that popped up he's like badri never gets the credit he deserves because uh, it's it always used to pop in when there was like three down and then you'd still do something and my favorite image of uh, my most memorable image of you is the amount of sweat that used to come out of you <laughs> like it was a devastating amount of sweat but uh, uh, tell us about the time at and, okay before we come to csk i want to talk about uh, i i'm assuming both of you saw the match yesterday uh i actually sorry i didn't i didn't get to i was just watching the highlights just a little bit before actually i was trying to trying to catch the highlights I yeah. didn't see. It. I didn't see. It. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Same. Okay. So, uh, so uh, tell us about your your time at CSK. I know that it was like probably. Uh, it's interesting that Bala says some uh, says that you uh, with CSK where you said that you're used to uh, going by instinct, which seems to be a little bit what CSK tends to do as a unit. Is that fair or unfair? Yeah, I think um, see CSK um, is is you see it's it's basically it's. uh more like an extended family that's what i would like to say about csk you know csk if you see from the start till now not much has changed the core of the team uh, you know the coach or whatever you know that is you can't see many changes in um, in in csk so i think it's it's more about you know being in like an extended family so you get to know each other so well that you exactly know what you have in hand and how to use it i think that is the thing about csk and and like you mentioned uh, you know my my you know my roles and what um, the credit i deserved and all that see my life basically um, has been little bit uh, kind of kind of you know it's it's been uh, kind of mixed i would say because you know all my life whenever i started cricket uh, the one thing that i wanted to do was play test cricket for india I always dreamed about what i dreamed about was playing in australia playing test cricket for india and all that that has always been my dream but unfortunately at the time the order was packed Uh, you know, it, it yeah. had Gautam Gambhir, Virendra Seva, Rahul Dravid, followed by Sachin, Lakshman, Saurav. So these these are guys you can't replace. You know, just like that. This is one of the best batting lineups the world has ever seen. Let alone India, one of the best batting lineups the world has ever seen. So I was playing pretty well. I was getting the runs. I wasn't getting my chances which I deserved in Test cricket. But in hindsight, if you see, I I never thought in my career that an IPL like you know a a, a format will come. and one of the world's best teams chennai super kings is one i will be part of and i will end up playing about 114 matches for csk i i didn't never thought that that will happen i think this is what life is all about i think it is it is about you know you go after something but then you 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 know something else comes up and you take it up and you do well and you know that that's the, that's what happened to me i was going after test cricket but i didn't get the opportunities there but suddenly i was i didn't even never thought of myself as a t20 cricketer but i think my batting evolved slowly over the years bala bala knows that i think over from the early 2000s to about 2008 my my game evolved a lot and suddenly i got the rewards for that through ipl through t20 cricket 
and like you mentioned my role for csk was a pretty hard one because i was i was never you know getting the you know chances when the when the good things were right i was the kind of the that's why that's why harsha bogle gave me the name an umbrella man i think he yeah, yeah, yeah. gave me the title umbrella man so because basically i was there always there for a rainy day you know when it's 30 for 3 okay for 3 out 10 for 2 for 3 out you know that is the kind of thing so i had to i had to mentally prepare a lot you know that was the training that i had to do you no know, i had to train you know for proper technique 10 for 2 difficult conditions i had to play but sometimes i had to play death overs as well slog overs as well sometimes either number 4 or number 7 that was my role so it was pretty hard uh, i would say a little bit uh, thankless it got got a lot out of me you know playing 6 years for csk people don't realize it actually it is a uh, kind of very emotionally mentally draining because um, you know sometimes when you see when you have played a really good knock the previous match you know like um, for example against pune warriors i played a really good knock where i scored 58 not out but the next match i didn't get batting because the next match the conditions were good the top order and csk batting lineup was damn good it was one of the best batting lineups you know with uh, with uh, hayden and uh, you know hasi at the top uh, raina at 3 doni at 4 albi mokal at 5 you know this kind of you know solid batting lineup so i i will i will not get a chance so it it got a lot uh, you know emotionally it got a lot out of me i think those those 6 years like you mentioned it wasn't easy but i loved it i loved it i think from my young days uh, i think my dad played a huge role in uh, you know making me realize that you know we were you know we always said that whenever the chips are down that's when you have to show your you know your prowess that was the thing i was brought up on so that helped me in the, in the csk days But Bala, was it also like I mean the the, the I think the mentally draining aspect of this, yeah, yeah. Badri explained it. Ah, he was the most. Uh, I mean, underdogs we call it someone who does many roles and uh, need not to be a, a superstar of the team, but someone who just fixes some of the places where chain linkers. So mm-hmm. Badri played that role for. I mean, uh, 115 matches is a huge achievement when it comes to franchise cricket because you know. it is uh, so much of uh, 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 i mean uh, things at stake and uh, high pressure one of the high pressure domestic leagues i would re- i would uh, no uh, recall because uh, uh, international is the only uh, uh, exposure which we uh, in that era we used to look forward to because uh, hardly 11 players and 15 members to pick so out of that around 80% is always going to be i mean uh, fixed most of the eras will have a 80% 70% of the team compositions are fixed but what you are fighting for is that one place especially in, as a batsman in india it is very difficult to uh, i have seen many of the career many many cricketers career uh, they just fight for that one place one vacancy and they just make shift some of the uh, even lakshman have to open in the in the in yeah. the early phases of his career so you have to keep looking at opportunity this is opening up this is it's like multiple vacancy where you have to keep preparing yourself that's what badri did whatever is thrown at him challenges and uh, whatever the demands of the team he was yes i'm ready i can do number 3 okay uh, because many a times after 6 overs or 8 overs badri will not be asked to go to bat because they will uh, they'll ask him to pad up he will have to prepare in a particular uh, scenario Then, if that scenario crosses, Basdri will be sitting there with the pad on. Yeah. So it is like some of the job which you need to be mentally having a, a kind of. Imagine as a bowler, I will I will know if I'm getting picked. I know exactly like four overs is expected of me. If not that day, like probably I will end up bowling three overs or two overs. Not many a times I will not touch the ball and come out of the field because only four options or five options there. But Basdri sometimes. He may go or he may not go inside and bat, but you have to do it for the team. See, I, this is why this is why Bala, you guys are such good friends because Bala is like one of the few bowlers who is trying to empathize with the batsman in T20 cricket. This, this is this is really wonderful of you to look out for the like these batsmen also. Have, uh, yeah. It means good. Yeah. Uh, even if you take five wicket all as a bowler, if you don't end up doing well as a team, yeah. it doesn't matter because it may give you that limited. unless and until you you have a road to reach that is a championship and last day of the tournament which is when you start a tournament or any day you're thinking of going and finishing the final lane and be yeah. there that final day where which is most important in any sport uh, be it uh, golf tennis and olympics any any uh, any multiple sport you starting is uh, is a phase where you get momentum and make sure you're going in a right way where you finish off 
so it's always a team which uh, which needs to carry in a team sport uh, being a, a, a departmentalized like a bowler or a batsman or a fielder doesn't matter as long as the team is uh, getting the momentum uh, no matter because in a team sport that's what very important There's a lot of, I think, a lot of times when people mention something about uh, that in T20s, it's all about soaking up the pressure. And it's actually very interesting, Badri, that you brought up this thing about like uh, uh, a lot of people have said that that the IPL or T20 leagues generally across the world have given a lease of life to young players who wouldn't get the opportunity ordinarily. But it has given like players like like spe- like you, for example, who it's like the team which is just packed with all these legends, and it gave you this new lease of life. um so i mean that's uh, i think my five year old son i'm trying to explain cricket to him right now which is really exciting i don't know if you've started this uh, where i'm trying to explain to him why yesterday pakistan uh, was defending 277 and i'm trying to explain to him the next test match and he's like again they'll defend 277 i'm like i don't know yet <laughs> this is this is really basic questions which children are asking yeah. uh, but i'm i'm curious about this whole thing about soaking up the pressure what does that involve because i think both of you have been in situations where it's like either uh, having to bail your team out or bowling the last over quite a few times uh, or the last few uh, death overs <laughs> see you're laughing at <laughs> i've done that many times so either a villain or a hero because see in team yeah. there is no no uh, because it's a 16 match tournament if you end up playing the finals it will be a 16 or maximum 17 match tournament so all we need to do is you just have to accept and keep moving forward and prepare prepare to do because uh, prepare to do a role which uh, in uh, in basketball it's the last 5 seconds or 3 seconds wins the point and game so make sure that you be uh, involved be prepared yeah. to involve in that seconds not that uh, if you break it down that second decision like few uh, second decision which may change either way so be prepared for that so that is what t20 has taught it is uh, yeah, for a bowler like me like you no know, i i will come don't you say like okay go i've done uh, i had many many miserable days and uh, if you ask uh, many fast bowlers uh, the death overs sometimes like <laughs> the cricket has gone into some level like where grounds becoming very very small <laughs> you may need uh, uh, you may at one point like you no know, some some there like you have to be a little bit uh, proactive and just understand that particular moment break it down to a moment and try to leave it there you try it and leave it there because it's another opportunity where you have to be prepared to uh, face the same way because it's not going to stop there so yeah. there is going to be another death over another similar situation again there is going to be another like that 16 days you have to have a, a, a kind of marathon you have to play Yeah, so Rob, actually, we have been there with each other. I think uh, in many, many bad moments. I have had some really bad moments, and he has had some really bad moments. I have cried to him, and he has come and you know, uh, you know, found sympathy in me. And sometimes, you know, we we just you know don't even want to talk. We we'll just both be sitting in the same room, but we don't want to talk to each other about what happened the last night. This is the worst of moments. I will I will call him once in South Africa when IPL was happening. He we had a both of us had a really bad match. Remember the match against KKR, Bala. So as we, this was it was a really bad game because uh, you know I was having a small niggle in my right hip flexor. So I my kind of you know having a small niggle. But in the crucial game, I was about sixty percent fit. So I played. Uh, but I don't know whether uh, Dhoni was aware of that or not. I I fielded really badly that match. I had a really bad because I couldn't bend down on my right side. So I left a really crucial four which I had to save. I think Bala was the bowler in uh, that in that over or something. We played against KKR. We scored 190 plus, and KKR got it back. 190 plus, they got it sure. back, and we lost the crucial game because Bala had a bad game. Bala went for quite a bit of runs. I fielded really badly. Dhoni came and just he just kind of you know one there was once in the dressing room, but Dhoni lost his cool. So he just went at me straight away. He said like Batri, you are in trash. You forget you are playing for a country. You know what are you doing? This kind of fielding, it's not done. It just can't feel like this. What's happening? All that so. But I I didn't know whether it is said that I had to had a small niggle you know the physio and coach were aware of it but I don't know if the MS was aware of that so I was like kind of I had to feel that but I couldn't I just went to the room and I was like crying and I was like kind of you know because I was upset with myself actually not mm. because MS you know all that all that Bala was like in no mood to talk Bala was like 
third he is just yeah, many days no mood to talk only <laughs> yeah the next day the next day i went to bala and asked bala come down let's go and have lunch let's go have lunch and he's like i, I remember bala telling me you know he's like what i'm not going to have any food you just go I'm not coming anyway just go just go <laughs> so i went by myself usually we eat all the meals together we go out and we discuss and we eat you know, but that day he was like just no just you just go i'm i'm, I'm just going to just leave you alone he said so i just went i you know had a lunch so see these are moments that are going to happen to you you know but end of the day like you ask me what is soaking pressure i think this is what yeah. it's all about you know when you're when you're out there you know there is so many things you see you know when you see a player on tv you just see a player with his bat and all that but there are thousand and million thoughts going inside the player's head so nobody sees that the tv doesn't cover it we don't talk about it most of the time players don't talk about it though what we can do right there is what differentiate the men from the boys in that moment like you mentioned soaking a pressure what is what is soaking pressure is that end of the day it's a game of cricket that is he is bowling i am batting it's just me and the ball and that moment that is what bala said coming down to that moment it all comes down to that moment end of the day i am just playing a game of cricket so that's all you can do to your best of your ability so what to more what the commentator talks about you what the team wants out of you whether you are keeping up the expectations these are all you know it's it's easier said than done you know when you're sitting in an arena where filled with you know uh, a lakh people and you know people cheering for the home crowd everything whatever is happening but leave all that and end of the day just play the game i think uh, that is for that you have to train i think it doesn't just happen overnight it's not like a switch where you turn on and it happens for some people it does for a, for a guy who is like ms dhoni for example he is blessed he is naturally calm he is not like he is trained and done it he is blessed i think he has a hand of god where he is naturally able to keep himself balanced stable take the right decision but not everybody can do that i think it comes from training you train with pressure you play under pressure you just you know execute but end of the day you fail as well you embrace it and you keep moving on i think that is the that is the thing about soaking in pressure Uh, okay, I'll just take a couple of questions. Yeah, this the Sogia pressure thing is like, uh, like you know, I, one of my favorite cricketers right now is uh, is Rishabh Pant, and uh, I, I I want to talk about this very briefly. Where it's like, <clears throat> and it's not because it's the Pant connection. I just want to clarify that it's <laughs> like other things. Yeah, I see where you're going. <laughs> I just I just like like I mean that weird shot that he plays where he, and it's not a scoop, but he hits the ball behind, uh, like behind leg from. off it's just one of the weirdest shots which nobody in world cricket plays it's a very strange shot to play and um i, I was um one well, interview i was i was listening to steve war who said that uh, i don't understand why england doesn't play devin malcolm more uh, like they dropped him for one of the ashes and he's like devin malcolm is the kind of guy who may be very expensive on the day but he'll get you a lot of wickets so we never understood why devin malcolm was not playing and, and it's the same thing that i feel about arishab and uh, and this comes to a very interesting thing which i which i'm very curious how how cricketers deal with is the um, uh, the online uh, and specifically right now like right, right now though it's reached next levels how do you deal with the crazy amount of online trolling like bala i know that like i think that time when you gave whatever 20 runs in that over or whatever it was which has happened to pretty much every bowler in the ipl at some stage that. my international yeah. debut game my international yeah. debut game against west indies those days uh giving 10 runs in over four overs 40 runs was uh, was like branded as like you have done something very very bad as if i have done a crime so <laughs> for you you must be feeling very very um, uh uh i mean uh, bad because uh, your one opportunity international game you come and face gale veins heavel veins i mean uh, uh carl hooper and all these guys and you are out of the team so i remember having my breakfast the next following day in front of me one small kid coming and telling uh, jp adav was sitting next to me and is that small that, that balaji who picked this balaji i'm sitting here <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was bowler yaar like that so okay you have to digest that so uh, it it allows you because you are in a Uh, later on that time i was 19 and half 20 or 19 and half very young to uh, actually i just came back home instead of going home i just went straight to the ground <laughs> landed in chennai i didn't go to my house i just went straight to the kemplas ground and took a ball and kept bowling and bowling vented out my anger and multiple things were getting inside your head that was a era before social media thing imagine yeah Imagine the current scenario. That is one kid 
one newspaper or probably five newspaper and one billion people seeing you wherever you are going to be like a, a one match that's all everybody will be watching your uh, performance so the the profession and the 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 kind of uh, the same people change in pakistan too uh, within two years down the line yeah, yeah, yeah. it is about to just be there and fight it out within yourself and staying in that uh, there is always going to be a lot of doubts and because i remember my dad watched the match and said to my friends who were watching because uh, i was coming back home and he he has not even spoken once he told nobody ask anything to bother no question is asked why you bold why because there is going to be uh, a lot of uh, mourning and uh, it is as if like the funeral is happening when you come back <laughs> and suddenly everybody will look very small and you have to face okay have i done any crime i'm coming back from a cricket game first <laughs> opportunity 19 year old so i feel bad i feel bad because uh, modern day uh, there are the it, the 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 expansion of uh, all these things good and bad technology has given that kind of uh, allowance so everybody's uh, life is going to be like trolled and everything because especially when you are in a, a public forum uh, when you are doing yeah. something witnessed by more than 1 billion people it is it is natural you cannot go and uh, uh, do it for uh, 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 to prove them wrong you have to do something it is yeah. about you then you go inside and ask uh, yes is it is it something which i need to do is it something which i need to completely open up my mind and body and my preparation how i'm going to because the only thing i know is cricket right yeah. there's no other thing i know uh, yes studies were there but what what made me today is that the the kind of uh, the the kind of love and affection the passion which all started through this wonderful game of cricket it started from a a uh, gully cricket it started from somewhere you started loving your art and it took you to that level so break it down to that and then yes i am whatever i'm doing i'm doing for my game and i'm going to enjoy it. so probably uh, after a certain time you see a lot of changes suddenly when you're performing like the whole uh, entire street was waiting for me they received me and there were people in an airport where came to receive me after that pakistan tour it was like as if like oh <laughs> i was pitching my hand and no checking whether the same two years back one kid came and said like this balaji should not take it to the team yeah <laughs> like that and thing time only 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 thing is like it's about you and the time it's about right. how you handle yourself and time will take you to the place where you cannot even uh, imagine the magic is there for you i'm just imagining that little kid at the airport going like who picked this balaji good choice or something like positive just like he's 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 had a conclusion to his trolling and there's no way you can troll back a, ch- a child right if a child says something you can't even say anything like hey mind your own business is a child uh, but i have i've heard stories from cricketers multiple times about like them being in like a in like a buffet at a hotel and somebody from the uh, uh, opposing team some random fan is coming in and abusing them like what's i don't understand how uh, insane people are um but yeah i mean it's so interesting how you just said that you went back to cricket that is so like that's such a great response where your first thing is just i'm going to go to the stadium and keep uh, bowling so yeah yeah see that is the thing about you know but like like what bala mentioned i think it's end of the day it boils down to cricket uh, yeah. you know like like you mentioned it happens many times uh, when you are sitting they are come and ask you the most irrelevant questions sometimes sometimes the questions are really good sometimes they are really honestly asking you but sometimes you get you know uh, you know why did you why did you play that shot yeah that match why did you bowl that ball or why did you you know we sometimes ask that and sometimes the the, the you know we also have moods so we also have sometimes we are coming from a bad game or a bad innings and we are being you know put under pressure we don't know what is going to happen future is uncertain many things are happening in our mind so suddenly you react then like hey don't i don't aisa mat aisa mat pucho or something like that we just we just say oh you no know, just on that moment and suddenly we are created that sometimes there is a created that cricketers have attitude know this that they have that kind of you know kind of uh, you know the way we react or something like that this is being created and sometimes you are also having a mood yeah they somebody ask for a selfie you just say that okay no i don't want please just leave me alone because you are in one zone you are in one area and then suddenly you are being created and you know you are be like you mentioned some you know comments are made about you which actually you are not at the end of the day you also a human being there's a lot of emotions and ups and downs that you are going through in your life and uh, you know this taboo sometimes is created that 
we have an attitude we carry ourselves well because they don't understand the pressure or you know to be honest to be fair i'm just i'm just i'm just being you know uh, honest putting it on both sides both sides of the coin so i think it's important to realize the amount of pressure and the thing that we are under see end of the day you should realize that our life you know as a cricketer depends upon a sport 50 50 mm. chance a, any inning you can't say the bowler will bowl well or bat well or it doesn't it's a chance but your life depends on it so imagine the pressure it's not like other profession that is why i say that when you take sport as a profession you are taking a chance because you can click or you cannot click and india the variables are even more lesser because we are a country with a billion population and 80% of it uh, almost plays it or you know it's followed like a religion so the chances of you making it is once again a very 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 little percentage so it is you are always under tremendous pressure i think uh, so that is one thing i'll deal with so coming to punt like what you <laughs> mentioned punt <laughs> so see i have two things for rishabh punt first thing is yeah. rishabh punt as a player rishabh punt as a player he is a hands player okay so whenever he is batting yeah. or whatever he is a hands player he is not the best of technique or anything but when he clicks he looks really good he just smashes like the shot you mentioned it's all a pure hand shot you can't you can't move your foot and hit the ball there you can't do that you have to stand and hit stand and deliver he is that kind of player and he is really good he is talented so you have to accept the fact that he is a hit or miss kind of player on that right. day he plays well he is going to look like the boss he is going to just smash it out of the park but when he gets out it looks really bad you know that's yeah. the way he going to get out when he gets out that's why he gets so much attention so people you know always you know talk so much about him that is one thing the second thing i have for rishabh pant is i think people keep on comparing rishabh pant to dhoni because the the keeper that he is replacing is an ms dhoni he is a legend he is one of the best one of the best in the cricket world has ever seen so they keep on comparing pant to pant to dhoni i think that is not fair you know end of the day pant is a youngster who is just making his mark if you see just take him rishabh pant as a youngster who is coming to them he's done recently well he's got hundreds outside of india yeah. not many have done it he's got hundreds in australia and england and all that so not many people have done it so in all fairness you have to give credit to punt hmm okay so it's it's important to you know that people should realize when they are <laughs> thank you so much it's on my book <laughs> <laughs> yes that's what i'm saying exactly so important to you know recognize the fact that he is you have to just see him as an individual and not always put him on a pedestal and compare it with a legend like ms dhoni so that is not fair yeah i felt the same way about umesh yadav like i am uh, like i love umesh yadav i, I mean i do this and and again i mean talking about he's he's the balaji now of hitting sixes right <laughs> he just he just went up there and tom those five six and you're like what is happening yeah. where did this come from <laughs> but i mean umesh yadav uh, reverse swing in the ball is just like uh, it's just a delight as a as a as a indian cricket fan yeah. to watch that guy and i remember that even he's been through a lot with regard to and by the way i, I have to fully accept that i am one of the trolls let's be perfectly honest i am one of the people who, who during a match like kaise kiya ye is one of those people of the see emotion of the nation is going to be like they expect you to be uh, winning especially when you are uh, representing the country it is yeah. not only you there are millions uh, see footballers and uh, all the footballers will uh, face this every now and then because football is the most uh, intense game when it comes to like performance one goalkeeper a mistake everybody will talk about that one penalty corner or one mistake one particular moment so it is bound to happen as a goalkeeper you have to prepare for that because you cannot stop you are not a flying saucer where you just go yeah. and <laughs> whatever you see in the tv you can do it but, uh, mistakes and uh, there's so in a public life uh, pretty much a uh, uh, playing sport and you are a you are a kind of person uh, uh, who is going to set examples for generation after generation how many will get opportunity when you when yeah. you when, when you look at it i am one of one of the 300 uh, cricketer in 90 years old cricket in india and it is just if you break down to percentage i am one of the 300 cricketer it is only 300 cricketer played in 90 years of indian cricket 80 70 years of indian cricket uh, since independence before independence a little bit so it is the odds are very uh, mean very diff- you have to be proud and take your game there your if things have helped you to reach there definitely if you believe the things will help whatever you have done that and help you to you know uh, get your recognition also yeah. so that's what i'm uh, umesh again uh, is some sensation one guy keep on hitting the 140 km mark because there was a 
uh, kind of illusion and uh, like you know whether we can give it back to the Aussies and Aussies are bowling very quick and uh, the batsmen all the batsmen I always feel that when express pace they receive uh, from the opposition side like the Australians and 90s West Indian cricketers they intimidate and they wish one of our guy can do to their at least one batsman or a tailender <laughs> when, uh, because they are like Please, bowler bouncer. They don't understand <laughs> bowler's point of view. Bowler looking at the length and swinging the ball. No, I want you to bowl a bouncer. Mid off and mid on. Most of the time, you get to see a batsman doing a favor for you as a bowler. Shine the ball, get the ball like this. And uh, it is like as if somebody is feeding you with a spoon. Just give him one bouncer, man. Chin music. I said like, there's no required here. Yeah. This boy will get out <laughs> when you bowl fuller. No, I want to see one ball flying. Uh, because they, we have received so much, they, 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 have, they have to taste a little bit of their own medicine. I'm actually reminded of a funny story. I don't know. See, with all due respect to whoever is involved in the story, sort of, I don't know if you have heard of this. Uh, yeah. The match against India was this uh, West Indies, which happened, I think, in the 70s, late 70s or something like that. I think I think Abidali was the bowler. And uh, we were playing against West Indies. Uh, I think it happened in Chepok. Uh, so, the tail enders of the West Indies uh, 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 was batting. I think it was probably, you know, um, I think uh, Joel Garner and someone else was batting. And Abidali, Gavaskar was the captain. So, Abidali came and bowled a bouncer to the to, to, to Joel Garner. And he just left it like that. And Gavaskar all the way ran to Abidali and asked him, what are you doing? Uh, Abidali said, that, no, no, I want to bounce him. Kuch nahi chahiye, bouncer, bouncer nahi chahiye, bas upar <laughs> This is a very, very, uh, very funny story. I don't know if you heard of this. So he said, I, 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 basically, I have to go and face the, you know, these yeah, guys. Yeah. They have to bowl in 10 minutes' time. So better bowl up and try to get them out. There is no need to, you know, scare them or anything. But also to bowl a bouncer to Joel Garner. <laughs> it's a lot of effort yeah, to yeah. get them out. No, I don't know that. exactly who the batsman was. Maybe, yeah. maybe it was Andy Roberts or Joel Garner. Yeah. They were the tail enders of West Indies. West Indies team. Yeah. Very yeah, but, uh, but as Bala said, I didn't realize that bowling the bouncer, like who, who was saying this, that uh, was it Vaseem Akram who said that bowling a yogurt that takes more out of you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one I didn't make it in Chepong, you know, unless impossible. <laughs> Uh, like Neil Wagner right now, this whole uh, who's the who's the Australian cricketer who uh, uh, who who said come on big boy <laughs> who's that guy? Merv uh, Hughes maybe. Merv no no like right, uh, right now the 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 left-handed uh, wicketkeeper who is playing just purely as a batsman against uh, New Zealand right now. I've completely forgotten his name. What uh, basically, uh, we Wagner or Trent Bolt? Uh, no no the, I'm I'm talking about the batsman the Australian batsman. Basically Wagner was bowling bounces back to back. And this guy just Alex Carey. No, 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 not Alex Carey. It's not Alex Carey. It's the other guy. Uh, Wade, Matthew, Matthew Wade, Wade. Matthew Wade. Matthew Wade, 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 yeah. Wade. So I don't know if you've seen the clip. It's one of the best clips I've seen of the last year where Wagner is just bowling bouncer pe bouncer pe bouncer. And he hits him here, he hits him here. And Wade just walks away like, come on, big boy, you can do more. <laughs> like, what is happening? <laughs> this is great. But but sort of at, with all due respect to the, you know, the the uh, you know the previous generations who have played and all that, I think the current Indian team pass bowling attack. Oh, it's yeah. One of, the, one of the best, you know, for, you know, that I have ever seen, I think, because, you know, it's not just uh, earlier there used to be, you know, one bowler who used to be really good. But now I think they everyone is, is like really good. Like, I like what uh, you mentioned, uh, Bala mentioned, and all these guys. Mesh Adav can bowl 140. You know, Mohamed Shami can bowl 140. Jaspreet Bumrah can bowl 140. Ishant is, you know, clocking the early, early 140. So it's not like, you know, the now. You know, the oppositions are thinking, you know, whether to give a really bouncy wicket, semi wicket, because it's not just they have the fast bowlers. I mean, India has the fast bowlers. So, the wickets are getting much more better when we travel abroad because it's still your batsman. Once you give the wicket, your batsman has to play on the same wicket. So, they also yeah, have yeah. the ammunition. India also has the ammunition now to, you know, to really, you know, that is the biggest thing that I have seen of modern Indian team. You know, the fast bowlers. I think it was, it was never there, I think. Uh, the the infrastructure and the facilities that uh, you know they have invested in, I think that is what is paying off, according to me. You know, creating an NCA, creating, bringing the most modern thing in, and doing a lot of research into fast bowling and all that, and trying to take them properly and nicely. I think I think Bala will completely agree with me. Earlier, it was not there. You know, the the bowler there was not so much knowledge. A fast bowler will come. He is made to bowl so many overs, 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 whatever. Made to play cricket. See, fast bowling is not something that is easy. It is very, very physically demanding. 
it's you can you can hardly see any fast bowler that plays a huge uh, career without a surgery it's it's the yeah. truth so you have to go through some sort of that's how physically demanding it is so once I mean, you have that kind of thing i think it's important to take care of them manage them properly make them play the right cricket and you know uh, you know take it along that i think is right now happening in indian cricket i think badri uh, coming to your point why suddenly we started producing lot of fast bowlers is the uh, ipl is one factor where it reached to the interiors of villages of our country the the ambitions mm. like uh, uh, we always had powerful uh, i mean the bodies when you see a farmer or a family of jeans when you see uh, cricket used to be a gentleman game slowly uh, the the kind of cricket evolved and evolved and gone if you see most of the cricketers are coming from uh, not from the major city you know from a sophisticated uh, because fast bowling especially it is not something which very equivalent to morning 6 to evening 6 farmers life so you have to have that kind of a mindset to nest uh, you must be woving 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 like that kind of a, a mindset you have to have that for that invariably you develop muscle so your ambitions one person achieves that then it sets the tone to all the interior before that there was a close mindset maybe maybe there was a close mindset where uh, only technically sound only someone who is skillful can be reached but ipl what is done is like it has taken the game into interiors a belief into interiors and uh, two tier cities three tier cities are uh, villages and no cricketing uh, history behind but slowly they are starting the mark so we will get to see many mumesh yadav from his own towns and many bumrah from his own town and yeah. uh, many shami from his own town so all these things are very good uh, uh, in that particular department slowly like you evolve as you get opportunity and feeling to try okay i can also do this if one has set the tone one has found that you no know, kind of a navigation to reach there so many youngsters in the two tier city will start feeling that yeah that's a great very valid point okay we i think uh, i think uh, both of you have to go in the next 3 uh, minutes so let's uh, there's a lot of questions coming in let's just do 30 second answers for this if that's possible Uh, yep. Or I'll just read out about three questions, then you can say uh, 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 whichever ones you want to sort of go for. Um, okay, this is uh, Ankur Biswas has just said this is an old one where he said, "Congrats, Balaji, on your hat trick and Badri on man of the match in your one and only T20." Uh, that's a that's a great stat to have. Where it's like, yeah, you you killed it with those stats. Uh, yeah. Jaydi Palecha says, "Woke up at seven thirty on a Sunday to watch this from Malta. Oh my God, Balaji, my childhood hero. Heroes never get old. Old, lots of love." So uh, he woke up in Malta and all at seven thirty. My <laughs> God, <laughs> I think the European small Europe? country, which is yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> uh, Pratik asks, is it too early to have split captaincy in ODIs for India, like England cricket team has, or don't you think India has been lacking ICC victory of late? I think there's two questions. You can ask about the split captaincy thing. I think. Oh, uh, see, I'll go first. So split, split captaincy. Uh, see, it's not like you have to have split captaincy. You go for it. I think when yeah. there is need or necessity, then you go for it. Otherwise, I think see Virat Kohli right now with the Indian captain is Virat Kohli. I think Virat Kohli yeah. is the best player across formats. Whether you take Test match cricket, yeah. he's the best. Whether you take ODI cricket, he is the best. Uh, so I think uh, there is no need at the moment. I think we they have a pretty good track record. Uh, he is doing pretty well. I think uh, he is maturing. He is uh, getting better. So what Virat started as a captain and what he is now, I think the graph yeah. is going up. He's handling himself better. He's more mature. So uh, right now, I wouldn't warrant it. Let's see. I think maybe in the future or something. But right now, I'll stick to Virat as captain across formats. Okay. Uh, we'll take the next question for Bala, which is uh, Argya Sarkar has Bala sir two questions. Very greedy person. Uh, you played under two great captains. I'm sure you've answered this question about uh, a bunch of times. But uh, <laughs> this is a dumb question. I, is I, I don't know if this is true or not, but I'll ask this anyway. Maybe it's true, and I'm the idiot. You played under two great captains, Dada and Dhoni. The experience, and also the second question: Is it true you had jaw surgery, thus the beautiful smile? <laughs> that's true. That's true. I had a jaw surgery uh, when I was like uh, uh, probably two thousand two, two thousand three. That's uh, yeah. Totally, you must have done a lot of research on my <laughs> <laughs> medical uh, medical information. <laughs> uh correct the two captains one of the greatest thing happened post 2000 this millennium is uh, we got good leaders yeah started with saurav uh one of the greatest thing it's not like comparative uh, i'm not comparing the previous generation yes we won uh, big tournaments with gavaskar sir and uh, uh, kapil dev uh, under leadership but the modern generation looked up to yeah. generation recent yeah. looked up to 
especially dominating and little bit someone who can uh, one is like a, a kind of uh, composed and two different captain but big role models big role models as a leaders uh, they have set big example uh, saurav has introduced cricketers like including me and including many in that particular phase where indian team was literally floating with like you no know, that the audience lost interest with off field uh, uh, i mean allegations and everything but yeah. saurav gained the tide and gave some sort of that sense of direction for team india and the youngsters Yuvraj, Zahir, Arbajan, and uh, you name it, and myself, Doni, and Virendra Shivag. So a lot of guys who played a uh, flourish uh, have uh, gone on to make a big mark in international cricket and win a uh, series where uh, put the opposition where they were dominating. Especially the Australian uh, domination happened in that particular era, where uh, the tremendous side here, Australian side. If you name anybody. they are all like you no know, massive like a kind of a side which uh, uh, which you can compare it almost comparable to that west indians domination in uh, 80s yeah. late 70s so that phase you have to give it to dada for uh, what he achieved but what were the things were lacking for india it is about tournaments it is about yeah. winning big moments taking the team and winning a trophy is what ha- never happened for long period of time but when yeah. dhoni took over there is every tournament in uh, in the in the icc tournament uh, if you call it he won it name it t20 name it champions trophy name it 2011 name it number one uh, status uh, indian team ranking status and uh, purely because of his other side of uh, the uh, aspect is ability and ability to lead with uh, a calm and composed and one yeah. of the best man manager uh, man management uh, skill i have ever seen without even speaking a word and his presence will be felt in the dressing room as well as uh, uh, wherever you go be it franchise cricket or be it representing and huge respect for uh, uh, his passion for india the way he is is not a man for words he doesn't come out and uh, always keep a low profile life nobody knows exactly but the way uh, he has kept his presence in indian cricket you have to give a full credit to dhonis for what he has achieved both the captains have achieved phenomenal thing one showed navigation one take that into a different level where indian flag was flying very high and yeah. make sure we are dominating with tournaments one started off and again virat now is taking that flattening the curve which is <laughs> happening now make sure he wins uh, many tournaments because slowly indian team is picked up with major components like pass bowling and youngsters have started building their you know careers now so it is good time for indian cricket awesome thank uh, so okay this is i'm just going to say thanks to a bunch of people who asked questions i'm sorry we couldn't get all of them in um i got to ask one last question before we leave and this is uh, basically specifically about your friendship and this is something that badri and me have discussed before and i'll ask both of you the same question which is that are you guys really this close friends because uh, you are a batsman and a bowler combined like do you think this should have happened <laughs> to two bowlers or two batsmen i think yes you're right <laughs> <laughs> to batsman and bowler definitely helps uh, i don't know if we would have been this close or this honest if we were actually true because it is because it's it's just like that two cricketers you know uh, maybe somewhere if we were both were batsmen we would have been competing for one same spot <laughs> or maybe yeah, yeah. a bowler would competing for So sometimes it uh, kind of uh, the trust is very you know very even in the Indian team we I think most of the time the batsmen and the bowlers are the best friends because they yeah. they are sometimes not not you know comparing Yuvraj and Arbajan I think uh, Sachin and Zaheer you can see many examples I think many of them they are really close because uh, they may be a batsman and bowler I think uh, somewhere you are not you know crossing lines you are always can you can be honest honesty and you know trust is really there between us I, I surely agree with that. bala i think uh, see uh, more than that we know uh, it's a travel of time so 20 years of time uh, we had lot of difference of opinions like uh, i have a argument hardcore <laughs> argument <laughs> and uh, we will we, even in a tennis game or a golf game golf game i'll be more listener because i don't know about the sport that <laughs> much to argue with but uh, i'll be uh, anyway is my senior right so i always like to listen from the senior wow <laughs> wow <laughs> <laughs> so there's no uh, yes i will i will not even think twice to put my uh, uh, opinions because i am someone who will have uh, opinions have to come out if, instead of saying inside 
so i'm yeah. a strong believer because uh, if it is uh, if it is in a open and adjustable uh, uh, i mean kind of a forum where we get into intense and suddenly drop cooling down so <laughs> we go to the mountain and touching distance where it all starts melting after that so we have to like it's like uh, we managed it pretty well as a uh, individual for 20 years it's uh, it's yeah. something in modern age it's uh, not seen so yeah uh, we we are glad to do bring across i know and th- this is by the this has been an absolute delight for me because joy bhattacharya told me and and badri and me ha- happened to meet at a very weird event that i performed very strangely which i think we'll remember and i saw him and i'm like badri and he's like who's this creeper and i'm like let's talk and he's like why am i like, please <laughs> so he's been very nice and kind and uh, joy bhattacharya said that you guys are, are, are gentlemen and very nice people and i completely agree and i've also been fans of your guys uh, cricket for a really really long time so it's an yeah. absolute delight that you guys came So, yeah. Joy is a big storyteller. One of the best storyteller I ever, ever <laughs> met. Because Joy, the way he narrates the story, amazing. Uh, glad that you brought in uh, Joy's name. Uh, very nice person. Yeah, yeah. I think I think, and he like loves to talk. You can ask him any question. You're like, hey, what is a thread? And he'll talk for two hours about thread. So it's great. I, this is just a delight. So thank you so much, Badri. Thank you so much, Bala. If you have anything to promote, anything that's happening, please uh, go ahead. If anything that's going on, otherwise you can just conclude this. Hey, save. Yeah. PLD I think we are just moving into right direction right now and uh, wish everyone probably maybe 2021 will be a better year so so many things we have crossed this year so hopefully looking for a better future awesome yes 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 the uh, same thing thank thanks sir thanks for having us uh, it was great really having uh, you know a chat with us like i mentioned i think it's important to stay positive uh, yeah. and you know keep yourself uh, keep yourself occupied keep training keep doing uh, something physically and uh, i think yeah like i mentioned the uh, good things are uh, coming coming forward yes awesome thank you so much uh, gentlemen thanks a lot sorry we got a little delayed but i really appreciate awesome. your time uh, thanks a lot you guys can end your video i'll just say some concluding remarks uh, to the nation of india uh, thank <laughs> thanks a lot bye all right guys uh, thank you so much for tuning in today i really appreciate it uh, this is a lot of fun i uh, i really enjoyed this still very very nice people I'm so sorry to all the people who I couldn't answer the, uh, ask the questions for. I think there were a bunch of you. Aditya three one zero eight one nine nine seven. Thanks a lot for your support. Um, Ramesh, I think there were a bunch of other people who I couldn't take questions from. Uh, Abhishek Anand, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I, I just want to read the question during in Pakistan during press but about what is the best thing about Pakistan? He said girls are very pretty there. <laughs> I should have asked him that question. Uh, sorry, I got, I got very excited with my own questions. I forgot to get some of you in. Uh, just want to announce uh, on uh, we we have a break on Monday. On Tuesday, uh, I have Durga Datta and uh, Ravinder Singh coming in again. Uh, two friends uh, who are in the same field, so that should be fun. Thursday again, we have three friends. Uh, we have Tanmay Bhatt, we have Kanish Surka, we have uh, Rohan Joshi on Thursday. Uh, Saturday, I'm just figuring out. I think it might be an author. I'll announce it then. And then on Sunday, uh, which is next Sunday. Uh, we have uh, lieutenant general h s panag who's going to talk to us about uh, uh, 30 years he spent in uh, uh, serving uh, the indian armed forces a uh, very very interesting gentleman so uh, yeah it's going to keep continuing tuesday thursday saturday sunday this is going to keep happening and uh, i genuinely appreciate you guys coming in also please buy tickets for my show i have a show on 16th of august uh, which is uh, tickets are on uh, saurabhpant.com uh, it's a show called traveling pants so you can go buy tickets the name says something else altogether and uh, yeah and if you want to support this podcast please head to paypal and insta mojo and support the stuff and i'll keep trying to do it dude i really enjoyed myself i hope you guys did too this entire thing is running primarily because of your support so i really appreciate it and i'll see you guys on tuesday thank you so much and thanks once again follow please follow subramaniam uh, badrinath and uh, lakshmipati balaji on twitter and instagram and uh, tell them that you enjoyed uh, this entire conversation and we'll do it call khamba i have already spoken to khamba i'm figuring out who to get khamba with it'll probably be next to next week because you're locking dates uh, well in advance now um so yeah i'll see you guys on tuesday thanks a lot friends really appreciate it goodbye